So on Friday, Disney dropped this latest movie, Artemis Fell, on Disney+. Plus. After two days of watching it, I finally finished the movie and I'm finally ready to give my thoughts on Artemis Fell. So right off top, I'm not familiar with the character of Artemis Fell. I never even heard about the character until last year when the first trailer dropped. That was my first kind of first time I've ever heard about the character, so I wasn't really familiar whatsoever with him. I found out there was books, never read a book. I have no ambition to ever read one of the books. But I heard from that first trailer, everyone who read the book was really not happy with the trailer, was not excited. I actually never seen the trailer, so I kind of went into this completely fresh. And I also heard going into it that a lot of people didn't like it. So I went in having... My expectations were kind of in the toilet. I was not expecting anything whatsoever. I was just going in hoping to have a good time with this movie. And before I give my top, I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go give the good first because there's more bad than good. But the good straight up, kind of straight away is the special effects in this movie. They're not all the best. In action sequences, they're not the best. But if you just look at the character designs and just kind of, like there's a giant in this movie. Some of the character designs and some of the CGI work in this movie, it's it's pretty good the movie it's not too long so you're able to kind of bang it out in one and big thing for me personally i'm irish i live in ireland the fact that this movie takes place in ireland has irish actors in it kind of made this movie just a tiny bit better just a tiny bit better just because the movie just take place in ireland but that's all the good i can think of right now so let's kind of go on to all the bad stuff which there's actually a lot of bad stuff so to kick things off with the bad things, let's go with the casting. First up, our Artemis Fowl character. His name is Ferdy I. Shaw, I think is pronounced. Personally, he's very bad. He is really, really bad in this movie. I don't know why they decided to make him the lead character. Of course, he is Irish. That's probably one of the reasons why they chose him. But he's not a really good actor. You can see in scenes, he's kind of bland. He just has a stray face the entire time. No emotion whatsoever. And you can see in scenes, once he's done, he said his lines, he doesn't know what to do next. He kind of just stands there plainly. And a lot of scenes throughout this movie, he's wearing sunglasses. I don't know if that is carried over from the books or not. But also, I kind of imagine they made him wear sunglasses just to kind of get rid of, because I imagine his eyes were just bland like this the entire time. And I assume they said, okay, maybe we should put sunglasses on this kid to make him look like he's got a little bit more emotion. Because if you're going to watch a kid like that the entire time throughout this movie, it's not going to really go out that well. Josh Gad is awesome in this movie. Now, I'm a fan of Josh Gad. All the other Disney stuff he's done, he got Beauty and the Beast. Of course, he just played Olaf as well. And I like him in those. But this movie himself, he's got a weird voice. The voice he chose to do is really very weird. It's a really deep voice. It does not really go well with the kind of character. Or even just Josh Gad in general. The voice doesn't really... It feels like Olaf... Kind of Olaf angry. Rather than a dark brooding voice. Which really does not really work. And the fact that they made Josh Gad do a voiceover for this movie. In that dark brooding voice. Really did not work for me. You also have Judy... Um, I think it's Judy Dench. I think her name is. I'm not really sure. Last thing I've seen her in was Cats. I don't know if I've seen her in a lot of things. But from Cats to this, she's just having a terrible time at the moment. And I just... She also did a pretty weird voice that I don't understand where the voice came from. And then finally, we got Chris... Or, uh, Colin Farrell. And I was just... I was baffled with him. I think he's a great actor. And the fact that he's doing this in this movie, it actually felt like... Because I think they were filmed around the same time. He was filming Dumbo. And they said quickly, oh shit, we need... Okay, we need someone here. They pulled him off the set of Dumbo and told him, okay, will you just be the father in this? Because apparently it only took him like three days to do his scenes for this movie. And it's just... It's just bad. He's not... He's like... He's a great actor, but he just... He's wasted in this movie. And it's just... It's just... It's not good. All the casting in this movie, it's just... It really isn't good. Now, this movie has... It sets up a world really well, but because it's setting up a world and we only have an hour and a half, we don't really get to see a lot of the world. We get to see a small bit of it, but we spend the majority of the movie in a manor up in, I think they said Donegal. And the fact that I live in Ireland, this is nothing amazing to see this big mansion in Ireland. It's nothing spectacle, nothing incredible. I can't imagine it being for anyone else because this entirety of this movie with, with um, trolls, you've got fairies, takes place in a big house in Ireland. It massively, massively disappointing that the fact that they decided to go with that. And that there is some action sequences around the house and throughout the movie, just multiple action sequences. But all the action sequences are kind of bad. They kind of overly use 
slow motion. I feel like every action sequence has to be followed up by a slow motion scene, which personally slow motion, it can be used really well. Like if you look at the Wonder Woman scene when she's um when she just crossed over um No Man's Land and you see the slow motion slow kick, that was great. They used it once in the movie. But if you look at this movie, every single action sequence, they kind of make a slow motion, trying to make it look better, which I think personally made the movie even worse. The fact that they overused the slow motion effect way too many times for my liking. Like really just did not work for me. Just the fact that they used the slow motion tactic so much and of course if you want to have a good movie you've got to have a good story the story in this movie is dog shit the story is actually terrible i couldn't i can't actually even i watched it two days ago it took me two days to watch this movie and the story it's just all over the place like yeah artemis fails trying to get an artifact to give the artifact to someone to get his dad back and then there's a bad guy through this movie that we never actually really see the bad guy the bad guy is probably less than five minutes in the movie and um, the bad guy nothing ever happens with them so you kind of set up all this luckily though they did set up a sequel that they're never going to get but they kind of a lot of this movie is set up and it just doesn't go anywhere and the fact that you can't really do that for first movies you can do setting up sequels but you can't really have your movie really setting your entire first movie setting up to the sequel that's what happened with the tom cruise mummy that's why that movie failed and this movie kind of fails for that exact reason because there is no story they were just kind of trying to set up multiple sequels that are never going to happen so even though i have no expectations whatsoever for Artemis fail i found this movie to be boring i found it to be really dull and I would never watch it again. I was actually, it's the sick, it's my my ranking of like 25, 2020 20 movies I've seen so far. I have it down at 24. I was contemplating going back and forth. But I said, you know what, the turning is just that little bit worse. But I was honestly very tempted to put this down at number or number 25. Because this is a bad movie. Looking back at through the years of Disney movies, like in the past couple of years. The only thing I could actually compare it to is um the nutcracker which i thought was a terrible movie but i actually would think i would rather watch the nutcracker again rather than this because at least the nutcracker knew what it wanted to be this movie has no idea what it wants to be so honestly even though if you have disney plus it's free for you right now honestly i could not recommend this movie because it's no good i really did enjoy it maybe if you enjoyed the book but then again i've heard people who enjoyed the books do not like this movie so honestly I really cannot recommend this to movie to you whatsoever. But if you have seen the movie and if you have enjoyed it, let me know why you would enjoy this movie because a lot of people are very kind of all over because it actually seems like 9% in Rotten Tomatoes. So if you've enjoyed it, let me know uh, your thoughts on the movie in the comments down below. Click that subscribe button as well so you can come back next time I do another movie review or ranking in the future. But as always, thanks for watching.